welcome back to the show. We're sword fishing, a little bit of a northwest wind today, about 15 miles, 12 to 15 miles an hour. Supposed to go down about eight to 10 this afternoon and then pick up, I guess, late tonight. But we're gonna try to catch a swordfish here on the 28 Freeman. Got a couple of guys from Freeman down in town. Charlie here as well, with the Miami Vice jacket on. And we got two rods out for the swords. A buoy rod on, out there floating around. We got our main tip rod here. 1,488 feet on the Garmin right now. And we're dripping and dreaming, hoping for a big sword to end the new year. It's late December. Fingers crossed that uh, we'll get a good bite today. We got a big boy. Oh! First drop, drifting an hour, two rods out, no bites. You can see right here, the squids shoot some of the meat out of the dolphin belly, the mahi belly. Squids down there, which is a good sign of some bait there. We're gonna make one more drop of that one, and we'll change them out. Drop number two coming up. Please stay on there, fish. Oh, it's slack, he's coming up. He is coming up, you guys. The tip keeps going slack. We got the Rodan in, so we're keeping the hours down on the Yamahas. We got the trolling motor going. We've got a swordfish on. He's slacking us. He's coming up to the top, carrying us. Turn it up. Good job, guys. Got him? Awesome. On the board. Let's go! Woo! First swordfish with the new wrap. Hopefully, we didn't scratch it. Yeah, don't scratch it. Good fish, you guys. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Bigger than I thought. Definitely over 100 pounds. We did it. We did it. It's We're that, on the board. It's on that board. Freeman spirit. He said, so they work at Freeman. He says it's going to fit in the fish box. He said, it's going to be too big, sir. So we cut his nose off, but even with his nose covering, it's going to be too big. So you guys are gonna have to put a bigger fish box in the boat. We can do it. Can you do it? Make it happen. All right, perfect. First ever swordfish you've seen, right? First one. Hey, first man. time sword fishing? First, yeah. first time. First time for both these guys ever sword fishing. Second drop of the day. And uh, we got him there. Foul hooked in the peck thing. A lot of swordfish getting foul hooked. And he came racing up, jumping up the bow. We, it was cool because we had the trolling motor in the water, the Rodan, and we're just going along nice and slow. Didn't have the big engines on. And uh, Got the bite, hooked up, came racing up, jumping, two more really good jumps, and 40 minutes later we got him, 30, 40 minutes. Nice fish. We took the 28 Freeman offshore, and we got a sword fisher Chandler and Nick. You guys gonna take some home with you? Oh yeah. oh yeah, steaks in the house. Heavy wheels are going home back to Charleston within a couple of days, but they gotta fix one thing on the boat first. <laughs> yeah, that was part did. of the deal. I said, we'll get you a sword fish if you fix this thing on the boat. Drop number three, see if we can't get one more if we call it in and go home. See if we can't get Nick on one. If not, then we got a nice swordfish in the box and in the boat. We gotta get him in the box here momentarily. We're excited. If you look at the Garmin, we're setting up. It's uh, 1,578 feet right now, 1,580. A lot of bait down there, so that's all bait down there. That's what we're fishing that ledge. And we've got the 1KW in here from Aramar. The 42 for when we got the uh, 3KW in, but the smaller boat, you know, we got the 1KW high wide and then a the 1KW, so we got the chirp going and marking a lot of baits at the top of the shelf. Okay, we figured something out. The swordfish fit in the box. Just barely, but we got him in there. He's in there with ice, nice and cold. We cut his bill, so fold it back. and That's about as big as we're gonna get in there. It's a nice fish, he's long. I think he's 65, 66 inch short length. Maybe maybe a tad longer. Probably 120 pounds. Healthy, but he's not like super fat. But we're gonna fish another 30, 40 minutes, I think, and see how everybody feels, and 
And they go back and after that, or we may keep fishing, I don't know yet. We see whatever wants to do. But we're down there and we're drifting. Uh, we were bringing up the lines to go in. We were eating the rest of the chocolate orange that we got for Christmas. And there's a fish on here. I don't know if it's a sword or a palm grip, but there's something on here. Hopefully it stays. We're getting ready to call it a day and go in. It's uh, 12.28 p.m. So, see what happens. Nick, you're up to bat. So it's the Hooker Electric Detachable Drive, you know, on a Pen 80. And we took the motor off now. We used it the first few minutes. And you want to hand crank something, she was going to get the burn in. We got the trolling motor up. Now we're just using, you know, the main Yamaha as a drive on them. See what happens. Finger crossed another swordfish. Alrighty, they want to take some fish back to South Carolina. We got some people down here that want it. He uh, acted funny, you know, didn't do much the most of the fight. And he was swimming the weight up and we got him hooked on the outside in. The hook about to fall out right there. Meat today, meat haul today, baby. Nice fish, there you go. Wound up being another decent swordfish. Wasn't really expecting it, you know, we took the buoy off and get ready to bring the lines in and thought I saw something a little funny, wasn't sure. And sure enough, a minute later he was on there. I thought it was gonna be a 40, 50 pound fish, so we had the tags out just in case we we're tagging and releasing, but he's probably 80, probably 90 pounds, honestly, he's a nice chunky fish. And we got a lot of people to feed, so kept two today. We're gonna run back to Bud and Mary's now, about a 30 mile run, and we'll be back in there in the next hour and start cutting some fish up. And New Year's is coming here in a few days, and. Can hopefully go out tonight with these guys, get some fish cooked up, and uh, we'll be back to Bud and Mary before you know it. Good. Good job. Who put that there? So we made it back to Bud and Mary's. A few fans here, that was awesome. One of the kids had on one of our original Stan's hats from like three years ago, so that was nice to see. And we got both the fish off the boat here. Charlie and uh, Chandler unloaded them. Now it's time to clean them. We're gonna cut part of one of them. And if you have the room and space and you can gut them and let them sit overnight to relax, always better. But a lot of times you don't have that if you're coming and going. So you do gotta fillet them. But we're gonna core one out there so we can ice them down overnight and clean them so these guys, when they leave in a couple of days, they can take it. And the longer that it's together in the core, be better, you know, instead of us filleting it right now. But we're gonna cut part of it because Amy watched the kids today. She's been watching Clady. Uh, Clady. <laughs> Sadie and Claire, I combined them both. So we're gonna give her a nice chunk of fish for dinner for the next couple of nights, and we'll just show you that real quick. Uh, the moment of truth. Oh, it's so sparkly. I see silver and sparkles. That means there's some fish in there, probably. Like uh, snake mackerel, most likely. Glitter. Couple snake mackerel, yeah. So that's what they're eating down there. Shiny, that's kind of what that bonita strip looked like, but we got one on bonita strip and one on my Here's part of a squid right here. Here's a squid head right there. So there's still a couple squid around and that's kind of a cool squid. He's got all the polka dots on him. But that's what swordfish eat down there in 1600 feet of water. So a few fish in there and they're still hungry to eat our bait. Okay, so we're gonna wait to clean these things the majority of the way to tomorrow, but we do want to cut up a little bit for dinner. Fresh, so we're just gonna do one line like this and we will wait till stake it till later because it's fresh, it'll kind of swell up on one side there. It's just kind of going along to get that backbone, then just gonna point that knife up just a tad to get around the backbone there. There we go, so nice fresh piece like that. We're gonna cut this in half to put in the bags and looking pretty good. So you see guys back at home here, might go to a restaurant. I'm not sure where we're going to get a cook, but we're gonna eat some. Welcome back. It's two days later, it's Friday. We caught the swordfish on Wednesday. We did take some of it to Lazy Days and got it cooked up that night. And if you got the room and you can ice them down for a day or two, that's always better. And the guys are going back to Freeman tonight, so this was a better move to gut them, put them in the Yeti for a couple of nights, and now we're gonna pull them out and clean them the rest of the way. And it was still good eating it fresh, but better if you keep it whole, it'll last longer this way. And we're gonna pull these bad boys out now and start cleaning them. And send them back to South Carolina with some fresh swordfish. Let's show you how we do this one. Get the other one. Oh yeah, that's good. I can feel that one in the back. Oh, yeah. I think I got my heavy lifting in there. Now we're not gonna give them the Yeti to take home. I like the guys, but I don't like them that much. So we're gonna give them this 
less expensive cooler, which will still do the job. There's a couple ways, you know, we could do this one big loin like that, but I'll probably, on this one, I'm just gonna follow down that bloodline and split it down the middle. And then we'll have good size on Cause this fish is big enough that you don't need to cook the whole steak, you know, yeah. Half of this steak, you know, it's really a quarter of the whole fish there will be good. So we're gonna kind of get in the middle here and just come right down here and all the way down to the backbone there. We'll cut underneath the collar here and we can go on the back side, or the underside I would say, of the stomach. And we can work our way out this way. We're gonna give some away here. We already gave some to Amy for watching the kids that day while we went fishing so she was happy, but we're probably gonna give her a little bit more because this just cuts so much better and you can let it sit there. This is the belly wall and there's some slime in here. Ideally it's best to do this, you know, when you catch it or when you go to that first day scrape this way, but we can do it now, it'll still be fine. And some people cut away that membrane in there. I usually cook with this membrane on, because it does peel right off, but that's the slime that you wanna get rid of. We don't wanna eat that, so we're gonna do this, and we'll probably just trim the edge of the belly wall here, like that. Now, you know, now you can come back here and trim some more of the bloodline off too. But swordfish is not that bad. It's not that fishy on swordfish, you know. A lot of other fish, like tuna especially, that's, very, very fishy, but we'll get 90% of it up like that now, and we can trim the rest of it later on. Cutting right down there, and right up to the backbone. This whole piece should just fall right off. That's a piece of swordfish there. That's prime right there. Can't beat that. And we still have that all, all this out of this fish. Then we got the other one to do too, and we're gonna feed a lot of people. That was fun. It was uh, the second trip sword fishing on the 20th Freeman. We did it once in September, then once there in late December. So we were good. So this is what we call the collar. And I'm gonna give it to some of the guys that work here. They will make good use of that. And nice chunk of meat there in the head. There's a lot of meat in there too, so. What is that? This is a little trickier part. Whenever I used to play swordfish, I would always flip it over, but then you had the weight of the meat of the swordfish pushing on the spinal cord. But I watched some videos online and saw some of the commercial guys leaving the meat side down and the spine side up, you know, after they flip the other side, and they just peel that top section off. And then you don't have the weight of it on there. So you just get, you know, real close to the spine there. Work your knife down it. We're just gonna kind of lift the spine and this part up of it. What's cool is you can kind of just, you know, we'll go down here and then you can just follow your way down here along the backbone. I'm not playing as many swords as I used to, so I'm not quite as fast and quick, but I know I'll still get the job done. And that's another way to do it. Well, you just do it like that, and then you get the backbone off of that way. And now we got this whole section of meat here, and we didn't have to li lift it and pull it off the spine there, so that's another way to do the swordfish there. And this is big, so we're gonna split it down the middle again. We'll just follow down that center line bone right here, the bloodline. And that is a fresh slab of swordfish. We're gonna stick this up, and we didn't get to film these days cooking that night, so we're gonna definitely cook some more up either tonight or tomorrow night at the house and show you guys that. And take you along from start to finish but that's how you fillet a swordfish if you got the room ice it down if you don't you know just fillet the day you catch it especially on charters you know if we're fishing a boat's fishing day after day after day like we have to fly so you guys can take it home with you right then but if you got the room ice it down mike he fished that same day they got a swordfish they got some nice barrel fish and some rosies and they lost a couple of swords so that was good and he's out there sword fishing again today so hopefully today he'll get another swordfish or two I got wish. some snapper I wish we got yellow yellow tail snapper <laughs> Yeah, I'll do yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, You got mackerel too? Bonitas. Awesome. Yeah. Good job. Where are you from? America. America? Right. <laughs> Rock on <laughs> America. Awesome. Where, where, where in America? Where, where in America? What state? Charleston. 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 Oh, no, yeah. That's Charleston. where they're from, too. You from Charleston, too? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we live in Mount Pleasant. All right, so it wants to actually. Okay. Right, small world. Very small world. Here we are. You guys going to eat some fish tonight for dinner or we lunch? Have, lunch? We are. We're about to go eat it for lunch. You want a piece of swordfish in there? You want to try swordfish. a piece of swordfish? Sure, we'd love thank that. You. Let's give you a piece of swordfish, wow, too. thank you so much. Yeah, we just caught them uh, a couple of days ago. We're just cleaning them up, so we'll give you a couple steaks of swordfish thrown there. And wow, how nice. Add thank to the bounty. You. So you've been watching the videos? Yeah. Yes. Awesome, I appreciate it. Hey, everyone. All right, Franklin. Good to hang hey, out Bubba. with you. Hey, nice to meet Ross, you guys. So nice. Thank you so much. Take care. Yep. Yeah. Thank Franklin's got to try some sword fish, so. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, nice to meet you. Likewise. Yeah. Pleasure. Nice to meet you. Thanks for watching the videos, guys. Watch them all. Yes, sir. Yep. Yeah. Have a good one. Thank you. Welcome back to the kitchen. Charlie's here to make a feast. We're just trimming off a little bit of bloodline on here. 
We're gonna do some cedar plank swordfish, it sounds like, right, Charlie? That's the plan. It's the holidays, which means savory is the way to go. And we got this beautiful swordfish meat. So it's cedar plank swordfish with a special touch. We're gonna show you the way we do it. Cedar plank so is good. We're bringing it back. We're gonna do a citrus herb swordfish that is cooked on the cedar plank with the bacon maple topper. We got some brown sugar. We got bacon bits. And we have these finely chopped crunchy pecans. Right, you know, you can buy them chopped. Last time we were here chopping them up took a while. make too much work. So we're back, you know, it's an island, so you gotta work with what you have. <laughs> so we're gonna make that topper. We're gonna do some seared vegetables. We have some coconut rice that we're putting together, but the main event is definitely gonna be slow cooking the swordfish. On the cedar plank. I'm excited about that. How about you? Cedar plank is delicious. We did it last year a couple times and- It was fantastic. And we're celebrating. We're celebrating a special occasion because for the second or third time in a row, we caught a swordfish at the end of the year. It is true. We've had a track record of doing that for a while now. We've had some. But this wasn't as much fun because there was no suffering, there was no struggle, there was no misery. Went out there and like clockwork. It's not really sword fishing if you're not suffering, is it? Well, a couple years ago we went out, I guess four or five years ago now, we caught yeah. a 420 pounder, us and Frank, and out there. And we lost one the first drop in the morning. That's Didn't cool. have a bite for seven hours. And then at the end of the day, we catch this 420 pounder. It was a monster, and Roy, the dog, ate the bait. Ate the swordfish bait. Which was even better. The only thing he ate was the hook. Thread was barely on the hook, and he ate all the penis strips and picked the skirt off of it. It was surgical the way that he took <laughs> that thing down. So we're celebrating the legacy of awesomeness so, here so with swordfish. Seven fishing. years ago today, we caught six out of seven swordfish with Garrett Green. Yep, G Man. I think that was actually yesterday, but you didn't post pictures the following day. Oh, okay. Well, so look. end of the year can be very good Big sword fish. fishing. It's the best time of year, which is why we're going to make one of the best dishes we have. It's one of the best ones. It's very popular. We're going to show you how to do this, and then we're going to feast. This is the last feast on That's the it. YouTube channel. This well, this will probably come out after the new year, but hope everybody had a great Christmas and great holidays, and everyone has a great new year for 2024. So let's get cooking. Health and happiness. Here we go. I like to put a little bit of oil on this plank so that the fish doesn't really stick to it. Usually the cedar's got enough moisture in there, but you know what? We're going all out here, so we're gonna make sure this is where it needs to be. You can use any oil for this, but I like to use a really good olive oil. Swordfish really is one of those just absolutely fantastic fish to cook with. The meat is so beautiful and it holds so much flavor and it's so juicy if you cook it properly. You don't want steaks that are too thick, you want steaks that are just right. And that looks like steaks that are just right. Good to go. We're just gonna give that a little dredge. That's gonna go right on the board. Make sure it sits. Just a little bit of Italian seasoning just for that extra little citrus herb. This is one of my favorite citrus sea salts that you can get down here in the Florida Keys. It is absolutely magnificent. And these are ready to go on the grill. And Nicholas is gonna take you out there and show you exactly how to put a cedar plank on the grill. Isn't that right, Nicholas? I am. Right Onwards. Right. On the grill they go. Cedar plank swordfish coming up. Probably 15 minutes or so. We got our butter. Nice and hot. We're just gonna go in there with all those beautiful chopped pecans. But the most important piece of this whole operation is the bacon. That should be more than ample. And my favorite extra little touch, whiskey dust. McCormick makes this. There's a lot of people that make this. It's got a little bit of sugar in there. It's got a little bit of that spice, but mostly has that maple base. Speaking of maple base, you have some maple syrup around? You want some syrup? I'd love a little bit of syrup. We have homemade syrup right here out of Michigan. I think Sandy's getting excited. Hey, make sure to check out Charlie's channel, Bonafide World Guide. He's got all sorts of adventures on there too. We'd love to have you over there. We're doing he, crazy stuff. He had a video go viral, 550,000 views. We crossed 600,000 600, views today. It's very exciting. That's very awesome. Exciting. Not as exciting as maple syrup. Home, Hit it. Homegrown. Ready? Let's do it. How much? You tell me. That looks good. It's gonna, it's gonna be a topper. You hear that sizzle? Oh wow! Oh wow! That's looking real pretty. 
I like throw a little lemon on there to kind of finish it off. That's looking real good, dude. We're gonna give that three more minutes and then we're gonna take it off the grill and then we're gonna plate everything. We're ready to go. We've gotten efficient at this process after, I don't know, at least we've cooked at least three times together. At least three. <laughs> About um, like 12 years together. <laughs> counting. That's a long time. A oh long yeah, time. a lot of fish cooked. And some shrimp in uh, the bayou, which I don't like the shrimp oils. Whew, let's check this babies out. It's looking good. One little quick way to test, grab the skin of the swordfish if it peels off. It's starting to peel. We're just gonna give it maybe two or three more minutes and then we'll be good for sure. Time has come. Right around 18 minutes. It's very, very hot, extremely hot. Sure we know hot. that Nicholas's hands are so scarred from years of battle. Ooh, it's hot. All right, Charlie, you're up next. Yeah, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! It's hot. Oh! Ah. What happened to the tongs? Whose idea was this? Ah! Ah! How do you do that? That thing was 900 degrees. <laughs> it was pretty hot. Crazy. <laughs> oh my God, it was hot. We should have used something else. Honestly, this is my favorite part of the entire process right here. Get that seat. Woo! Candy air. Mm. We're gonna have bacon bits and maple bacon bits that for the does next couple it. days. We're doing Stan's maple bacon candy bars. <laughs> it's a new thing. Gotta get mm. up on this. That was great. Delicious. It's time to feast. Monice is here from the Bahamas. Shout out to the girls today. And She's about to try sword. Have you had swordfish before? No, my first time. First oh, time, wow. okay. This is the right one to have for the first <laughs> yes. time. Yes. Wow, definitely it. I know we're all hungry, and we ate a lot of the bacon bits in the uh, pecan topper already. It's time to try the swordfish. Charlie chopstick. Charlie's got the chopsticks out. So let's see what I know what's good. Try to limit myself. Oh, that's delicious. You approve? Oh, baby. This is really good. Oh, Did I get wow. Oh, wow. Oh. Cedar Ooh. plank. Whoa. Yeah. That's good. Cedar plank for the win every time. The cedar plank does give it a really good taste. So the other night we were talking about it, so I was like, does it really even give it that much flavor? It really does. There's about 18 minutes on there, and you can taste Ooh. the cedar in it, no doubt, the topping on top, the bacon bits and the maple syrup, and the pecans, can't beat that. I don't like my coconut rice too sweet. There's an essence of coconut, a little bit of the herb seasoning, but not, not too over the top. Should blend with everything else on the plate. Sarah, what do you think of the swordfish? Very good. You approve? Yeah, I like the bacon. Meats, meats, meats standards. It's like smoky, but it's moist. Yeah, not yeah. good at all. Well, good job, Charlie. Pleasure as always. That's the last swordfish you're probably gonna eat of 2023. And I was on the 28 Freeman. If you guys or anyone's interested in doing that, we do some sea trials on the boat. We're working with the Freeman sales team, so just shoot us an email or a message, and if you guys are serious about it, we may get out to you, you know, maybe we can get you out there for a quick sea trial, and if you wanna order one, we can help you do that too. So before this video ends, I want to take you back to our another trip though. This is right after Thanksgiving. And this was, I've only done two charters myself the last couple months. So this was on the 42 Freeman with Jay and Ray and all those guys. And we went out sword fishing. We're going to take you back to that right now. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. offshore. We're on the 42 today on the Broad Minded. Got Ray and Jay here in their group. Fished them a lot of years, about 10 years always after Thanksgiving and uh, November here. We're gonna try to catch swordfish. Mike had an epic day yesterday. They had five swordfish, but we're gonna try to get a swordfish today. Every day is different. We're getting rigged up right now. We got a pen hooker 80 up front. We're gonna do a pen 50 hooker back here. So that's the hooker electric and uh, we can't get tight today and catch some swords. We're setting out 1650. The Benita bait's going out. We got these Benitas yesterday, actually. On the bay boat on the X3. That could be the lucky bait. That was a Benita we caught yesterday. A couple of lights. Got a track. I've got to lure them in. There's pitch black down there. And the wind was blowing. That's yeah. all. I felt like I was... Three. Lost two. We're on our first drift here still. 
the current died out. You know, yesterday Mike had that really good day, but every day conditions change, so it doesn't mean they won't bite. We just gotta find them. We're not covering as much ground. So still drifting and dreaming, just waiting for that rod to make that little bounce. That's them we usually down there whacking it. You never know. Could hook a 20, 30 pounder, could hook a 3, 400 pounder. But drifting and dreaming, see what's happening. Marking a lot of bait on the Garmin there. You can see it really thick on the bottom. There's been some squid around. Mike's and the fishermen have been cleaning them. Had quite a few squids. There's most likely squid down deep. And so we were going to check our baits, and there may be a squid on this rod up here, but we think there's a small sword on the back there. Earlier they thought, you know, the buoy looked funny, it was hard to tell, but it does seem like it's a little heavier now coming up. We got the buoy off and Michelle's on it, and you can see the rod kind of doubled over now, so probably a small one. Hope he stays. Squid, they're chewing it up right there. Um, Forward. Seems like, you know, a smaller one in King Creek. Go, go. Okay, yep, perfect. Oh, down. oh my god. What's the matter? Stop it. Stop it. Oh, dude, that's the smallest I've ever seen. Yeah, caught. I know. Let me turn your real one. All right, let's get that part out of Oh my god. It's beautiful. Look at them. Look how beautiful it is. That's awesome. Will you hold this in real quick? Oh, I wanted a picture with it. Oh yeah, we got a tag in them. I wanted to We got one, we didn't get skunked. That was the smallest swordfish I've seen caught in the daytime. Under 10 pounds, probably. So the squid are really thick down there. I knew we could mark them on the sonar there. They chewed all that up there by the hook. They're chewing all the meat out by here, as well as down there. They even chewed some of the plastic on the skirt, so. Squid are carnivorous, and they will eat you, and they'll eat anything down there. So we're gonna put a fresh bait on there. Got some mahi going down now, and see if we can't go find us a keeper. But beautiful little fish there. We think we had a bite on that one, but it never came back. And he hit it once or twice, we thought, but no more bites. They're not biting today. But we're gonna go try and catch some bottom fish for some dinner. Cause they gotta go to Lazy and eat some fishing. All we got some mahi in the box. So see if we can't go catch a couple barrel fish. Put my family a rosy and see what happens. One minute warning. So we thought we saw a bite there. So Fish probably just got wrapped up in the leader for a second and swimming and not panicking and spooked them. So we tied it into a knot and that'll happen with swordfish. But there's actually chafe up here, you know? Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, yeah more chafe there than there's another bait. Yeah, 100%. One little kink by the leader there. So we just ran about 40 minutes in shallow here. Do some deep dropping for some yellow eye snapper, maybe a vermilion snapper. The goal is to get dinner now. We still tag and release a swordfish any day you get one is a good day. Obviously we want a big one, but yesterday was, you know, Mike had an epic day yesterday, so today was slower on the swordfish, so. But we're getting the rods ready. We're gonna fish two rods, drop them down here on the electrics. We're trying to buzz up dinner and get them up before the sharks get them. We're getting some bites. Could be yellow eye snapper, vermilion snapper. You never know if we get a scamp in here too. I think Ray's getting a bite too, right? There's a bite. There it is. There you go. Good job. We got color back here. We got vermilion back here. A little vermi. There you go. There's a keeper. Keeper verm. We'll take him. One for the frying pan tonight. All right. That is the vermilion, aka the bee liner. Yes. He will eat. He will fry eat up. up. Eat up. This is good. Oh yeah. We'll take him. I yellow eyes. A little black fin snapper, a little vermilion there. We're hoping for some bigger yellow eyes, some you know, three or four pounders, but I don't got them yet. Keep. That's gonna wrap it up. We just raced on in here. Got about 10 vermilions for dinner and a mahi. We let go our swordfish, but uh, day was done. We're gonna finish cleaning up here and uh, head back home for the evening and see what happens. So as you saw on that trip, we didn't get a keeper swordfish, but we still tagged and released one. And any day you get a swordfish is a good day. And the bite can turn on and off. Mike fished a couple days ago and they had four bites. He got one, we got two that day. But today he went and they fished about 1.30. And they didn't get any bites, and you know, fish can move, they can be in one area one day and just go on the next, but that's not gonna keep us from going back out there. So, if you wanna do a charter, come down to Bud and Mary's. We got the big Freeman, and there's a bunch of other boats there that charter too. 
And if you want any gear, as always, head to the website, stansfishing.com. Got all of our shirts on there, our hats, our bottoms, and uh, some of our fishing rods and gaffs. So hit that like button, make sure to subscribe, and hope to see you down here one day in Amrata.